Joe Wright. He's not bad. Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking, and here's my ranking of Joe Wright's movies. Yes, to celebrate the movie Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman that just came out this week, which I did review, by the way, for your information. Yes, I'll leave a link down below for that review. But yes, to celebrate that movie Darkest Hour, a really good film, by the way, it was directed by Joe Wright, and I thought to celebrate the film, to celebrate this filmmaker, I do a ranking of all of Joe Wright's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. So yeah, let's get to it. Here's my ra here's my ranking of all of Joe Wright's films from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get started. Coming at number seven is the movie Pan. Yes, Pan. This movie, yeah, I reviewed this movie a few years ago and stuff, and this movie is garbage. This movie is absolutely awful. I'm a big fan of Peter Pan. I love the Disney movie. I love Hook. I like the, the early 2000s Peter Pan live action movie. I'm a big Peter Pan fan and this is probably the worst thing I've ever seen when it comes to a Peter Pan story. Like this is a awful, awful film. This movie legit has Hugh Jackman playing Blackbeard, singing Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yes, here we are now, entertain us. Yes, this this is the most ridiculous, absurd, stupid movie. Worst Peter Pan film I've ever seen. This is the worst film Joe Wright has ever directed. Yes, it, it tried to be like stylistic and stuff, tried to be sort of like a period piece because that's Joe Wright's style, but this movie's awful. The story doesn't make sense. The movie takes place like in the 1940s and they're singing songs that don't even exist like, that don't even exist yet. Like, Smells Like Teen Spirit and I, Oh, Let's Go. Like, there's songs that haven't even came out yet, but they're singing it. The Pirates of Neverland are singing it. It's so dumb. Hugh Jackman is a fantastic actor. He is awful in this movie. That little kid who plays Peter Pan is awful. Rudy Mara is awful. Whitewashing and Garrett Hudlin as Captain James Hook is so ridiculous in this film. Everything about this movie is an utter failure. It's a failure of a Peter Pan film, and it's a failure when it comes to Joe Wright. He's a good filmmaker, but my God, did he do a bad job with this film. Come number six is Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina stars Keira Knightley and Jamie Bell and stuff. This is, well, this is a story that's been done before. There's two other Anna Kareninas. This has been a story that's been made since the classic era of filmmaking. I was never a big Anna Karenina fan. I never read the book or anything. I'm not a big Anna Karenina fan. And yeah, I saw this movie years ago. Actually, like, I think it was like the year it came out, which was like... 2014, 2013, and again, it had Keira Knightley and stuff. I was curious what they would do. I'm curious to see a modern adaptation of Anna Karenina, and this movie is a snooze fest. It is a dull, very boring film. Keira Knightley is very wooden in the wooden in the film. Jamie Bell's nothing that great. The whole supporting cast isn't that great. The makeup, the costumes, the production all look fantastic because it's a Joe Wright movie, but the movie itself is kind of a snooze fest. I don't know if it's completely loyal to the source material. I did see one of the Anna Karenina's a long time ago. Again, I'm not very familiar with the story, but I saw this film years ago and it really left zero impact on me. It was very boring. It was very dull. The pacing was undeniably slow. It was a slog to get through. And the performances came off very dull and very wooden and stuff. Again, it looked nice. The cinematography was nice. The production and the costumes looked very beautiful because Joe Wright is very good at period piece movies. But this just, it was a snooze fest. Coming number five is The Soloist. The Soloist has Jamie Foxx and Robert Downey Jr. It's about two, basically, basically about a musician helping another fellow musician, and Robert Downey Jr. in the movie has like a mental illness and stuff. This movie is a very sappy, melodramatic, cliched, formulaic film. This is a movie that mo a lot of people did like. It's not like a praised film, but there was an audience for this film, and it's fine, like, uh, Jamie Foxx and Downey Jr. do try. They don't really have the greatest chemistry with each other, but they do try. They give decent performances, but I just, I wasn't invested with this movie or with these characters. There's a lot of very unlikable moments, and I'm supposed to be rooting for these characters, and I wasn't fully on board with them. I, I found them a bit two-dimensional and stuff, and again, Jamie Foxx and Downey Jr. are both great actors, just... Their acting cap their acting caliber wasn't really a game in this film and stuff, and again, their chemistry was lacking a bit, and again, it was very formulaic and very cliche, I knew exactly where this movie was going, stories like this had been done before, there was nothing new or groundbreaking about it and stuff, and 
it just didn't really pique my interest. There was good things in it, but all in all, it just wasn't for me. I know there's a lot of people that are fans of this film, which is fine. Just me, I wasn't a big fan of it. It's just not for me. Coming number four is Hannah. Yes, Hannah. What if Jason Bourne was a 13-year-old girl? That's what basically what this movie is. Yes, Saoirse Ronan, Eric Bana and stuff star in this movie. And this is basically about a girl who's trained to be like an assassin and everything. She's trained in the wilderness and stuff. And then she has to go in the real world all on her own stuff because she doesn't have her dad with her. And she's tracked by an evil villain played by Kate Blanchett. Yeah, this is a really fun movie, actually. It is a bit overly long and stuff, and there's some moments that just don't work. But Hannah's actually a pretty darn good movie and a pretty fun action movie, and it has really good performances. Saoirse Ronan, this is what made me, like, you know, this is what introduced me to Saoirse Ronan, and she was really good. She was really badass in this film. Eric Bana was really good, had a really good villain, there's some good action sequences. It was pretty stylistic at times, had some good editing and good choreography. It, just, it was just a... It was just a pretty cool story. Like, again, it was like a Jason Bourne movie, but a 13-year-old girl, she's an assassin. She kicks a lot of ass. She's ever been outside the wilderness and stuff and in society and stuff and find out how actual real people act and everything. Kind of like a fish out of the water story. Not a comedic approach. It's more of like an action thriller approach and stuff. And yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's nothing great. It's not as good as the, the Bourne films, the Bourne trilogy, but it's still a fun, entertaining action thriller. Sish Rona is really great. Eric Banner really great again a good villain good action good editing it's just a really good entertaining film and yeah i like it coming number three is atonement atonement is a really powerful powerful film this was a really great film i remember re renting this movie at blockbuster when it yeah basically in the last like few years blockbuster shut down but yeah i rented this movie i didn't see theaters i regret that but this is a damn good film this has uh, kira knightley and james mcavoy basically it's about these two people who fall in love and stuff, he's more of like a lower class person, she's more of an upper class person who has money and stuff, and her little sister was is like this young girl and she's like obsessed with James McAvoy, and basically she doesn't like that he's in love with Keira Knightley, and basically she starts this entire rumor that he molested these kids and basically he gets arrested, and then he has to go off to war and stuff, and he never can see Keira Knightley again, he's in love with Keira Knightley, and then Keira Knightley becomes like a, a nurse during the World War and stuff, and I don't want to spoil how this movie ends, but it is a damn just tragic ending. How this movie ends is just... It is bleak and dark and just really sad and very depressing, but very effective. This movie is so well done, so well, so well structured, so well executed, so well directed. This is Joe Wright's, one of his best directed films. He did an amazing job. This movie was nominated for multiple Academy Awards. Both James McAvoy and Keira Knightley give great performances. How this movie is shot is brilliant. The long tracking shot during the opening war sequence is absolutely fantastic. Again, how this movie ends, just it hit me with a punch and I just, it's an ending I didn't see coming because they kind of trick you with the ending and stuff and it's fantastic. This movie is so gripping, so deep and so moving. Absolutely love this film, so good. Coming number two is Darkest Hour. Yes, I just reviewed this movie. I'll leave a link down below. I don't need, I need to talk about this movie. I just did a whole review of it. This has Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill when he's in when he's in power, when he's in office dealing with World War II. He has to do negotiations with Adolf Hitler. These are during the darkest hours of World War II. And basically, it shows you what Winston Churchill had to do during this time period and what he had to do to help his people and save his people. This is a damn good film with great dialogue a great screenplay. Joe Wright's direction is fantastic. Gary Oldman is definitely going to get an Oscar nomination. He is that great in this film. This movie is absolutely fantastic. It is so good. Again, check my review out. I'll leave the link down below. Amazing. My second favorite Joe Wright film, hands down. And my number one favorite Joe Wright movie is Pride and Prejudice. Yes, Pride and Prejudice has, again, Keira Knightley. Keira Knightley likes to do some Joe Wright films. And yeah, this movie has Tom Hollander in the movie. I'm trying to think of the whole cast. I'm blanking on the cast. There's a lot of actors in this movie. And yeah, this is based off the Jane Austen novel. A novel that, again, I haven't, I haven't read a lot of Jane Austen novels, and I love Jane Austen films. I, I might do a ranking of all of Jane Austen's movies, because I've watched almost all of them, and they're all fantastic. Like, Emma's fantastic. Uh, Sense and Sensibility's fantastic. 
Um, Love and Friendship was really good. Um, Mansfield Park. Like, there's so many great Jane Austen adaptations. I should just read the books and stuff. But Pride and Prejudice is one of my favorites. It's such a great movie. I love the different stories about all these sisters trying to marry all these different classes of men and everything. And it's just so interesting. It's so freaking awesome. There's a lot of good comedy in the film as well, which I did not expect. But it's a very deep and romantic... Uh, it's very deep and romantic, very passionate film. I heard it's incredibly loyal to the source of material, which is awesome. The performances by the whole cast is fantastic. The production, the costumes look amazing and elegant. The entire movie is just classy and elegant and just amazing and very smart and very sophisticated. It's just a fantastic, fantastic movie. It's great for all the Jane Austen fans. It's great for romantic fans, but it's also just a good, a good movie for fans of films and fans of period piece films. I love good period piece movies, and this is one of my favorite period piece films. And yeah, this is my second favorite Jane Austen adaptation. Sense of Sensibility is still my favorite, but this is a solid number two, and this, hands down, this is my favorite movie Joe Wright has directed. It's just, it's just so lovely. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Joe Wright's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. Say so yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me what is your ranking of all of Joe Wright's movies in your opinion from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to his channel, and join the dark side.